Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy, and I am Zach Peterson, your technical consultant with Altium, and today we're going to continue talking about a little simulation that we started in the last video, where we were getting ready to do some PDN simulations with a ferrite in the PDN, specifically used for isolation between different rails. This is definitely an important and controversial topic, and it's a, just a fun topic to analyze, so I definitely wanted to do it for you guys, and wrap up the simulation that we started in the last video. If you haven't seen the last video yet, go check it out. It's a continuation of our PDN simulation uh, little mini series that we started before. This just continues on from that and looks at breaking out our main power rail into a secondary power rail that might power like a PDN uh, or a PLL I should say um, and then we want to isolate that with a ferrite. Now this issue with ferrite isolation is somewhat controversial and it's actually kind of a difficult design topic that a lot of folks don't discuss but it's one of those things that you see in application notes quite a bit. So that's what we want to dig into and we're going to be using the spice package in Altium Designer. So get your copy of Altium Designer booted up, check out the simulation in the previous video, copy that schematic over and let's get started. Okay, folks, so this is where we left off last time. And um, just to kind of briefly review, um, we looked at an actual uh, component in a data sheet. Uh, we looked at a ferrite bead, and uh, this is a chip type ferrite bead. So it basically is just an SMD component, goes right on the board. And then we figured out what the, uh, the circuit parameters are, and then we've basically just modeled all of that right here in this uh, RLC circuit. Here we're just modeling a bypass capacitor and then here we're, mo uh, we're modeling a switching element and we've basically used the ferrite to try and isolate this element in our IC from this element in our IC. So this is something that you'll actually see in application notes. You'll see it in reference designs and I think it's important to understand what the capabilities of this placement are, what it can do and what it can't do and SPICE simulations are actually a really easy way to investigate whether or not this is effective. So that's exactly what we're doing now. What I went ahead and did, because otherwise we'd be sitting here for an hour just kind of running SPICE simulations repeatedly, is I actually set up a transient simulation and I set up an AC sweep. And essentially what these do is they just calculate obviously all of the transient responses at both of these uh, both of these circuits and then it calculates the uh, number one the impedance of the PDN as seen right here at this port and then also uh, it's calculating the transfer impedance now transfer impedance is a network parameter and I talk a lot about network parameters in some of my research and then also in some of the talks that I give at different classes and seminars and network parameters are really important for understanding circuit behavior and for designing circuits. Transfer impedance is basically a network parameter that describes the impedance that is seen by a signal excited at one port, but that induces a response at a second port. Ideally, you would like transfer impedance to be zero. What we want to go ahead and do is just look at some of those results. And I'm just going to bring up the AC simulation real quick. So here's the AC simulation results. We're going to use these for our analysis. Now, if you look at the transient results, what I went ahead and did is I actually just iterated through a few different values for the resistance factor in the ferrite bead. And the reason I did that is because if you look at these different part numbers for these different ferrites, the basically only differ in terms of the resistance here. You can see on the y-axis. So this just kind of simulates uh, a few different options for part numbers. Essentially what you see here is you actually see something really important because if I were to take one of these guys, um, let's say one of these waveforms, and I just move it over here to the switch, meaning this portion here, Q1 on the PDN, that's what you see in this new waveform, so the yellow waveform for the moment. So we have two components here on this yellow waveform, right? We have a low frequency component 
and a high frequency component. This comes out a little weird because of the, the time difference, but here uh, in this, you can clearly see there's a high frequency transient response plus a low frequency transient response. And then you can see that reflected here in the PDN impedance. So here we have our low frequency transient response, and uh, this says it's at about 2.8 megahertz. Then we have a high frequency transient response at about 630 megahertz. So when we look at the response in the ferrite, what do we see? What we see is that the ferrite does a decent job of preventing the noise at this frequency generated here in this portion from propagating over to here in this portion of the circuit. So, and, and it's not just the ferrite, it's actually the ferrite and all of the other parasitics and the bypass capacitor. So it's really everything together that helps suppress that propagation of this high frequency peak over here to this portion of the design. However, what do you notice in our transient results? It does absolutely nothing for the low frequency noise. So if you just peel off the period here and you just calculate what's this, this period here, well we see that we have, let's see, 500 nanoseconds out to uh, 834 nanoseconds. So if I take one divided by uh, Let's see, 334 nanoseconds times 29. It gives me 2.9 me 2.99 megahertz. So that's really close to this 3 megahertz, or to this 2.8 megahertz, I should say. Clearly, the the uh, ferrite bead doesn't really do anything for this low frequency noise. And you can actually see that when you look at the transfer impedance. So the transfer impedance for that ferrite is really low out here at higher frequencies, but you can see it actually does absolutely nothing at lower frequencies. So this illustrates a very important result with ferrite beads and a very important usage. So this is, this is very specific. Ferrite beads are really useful when you need to block a specific source of noise from one portion of a circuit from getting to another portion of a circuit. So if you look at the transient results, what's the noise that actually matters? Well, it's actually the low frequency noise because, I mean, this is a 100 millivolt excursion in either direction. So clearly that's the more important noise than whatever this high frequency noise was that we were dealing with previously. So the high frequency noise is already taken care of. It's this low frequency noise that we care about. This low frequency noise is basically unaffected by the ferrite. And that's actually really unfortunate because one of the myths around ferrites is that it's just going to kind of you know block out all of this noise. And that's not really the case. Uh, it's the fact is that it's allowing this noise in because this noise basically doesn't even see the ferrite. So if you look at the impedance spectrum, right, you can see this. You see that we still have a pole here, but if you also look at the impedance of the ferrite itself, you know, at three megahertz, right, the impedance of this ferrite that we've modeled uh, should be really low, and uh, compared to you know this peak up here where we're near the where we're near the resonance, and so that's exactly what we see. Um, so that's a that's an unfortunate consequence of a ferrite, uh, meaning that it isn't actually as effective as uh, we would hope it would be uh, in the case of using it in the PDN for isolation. So that's this particular application here. And one thing that you can do with this is you can actually explore these different values for you know, the inductance of this ferrite. And I actually did that here in looking at these results. So what I went ahead and did is I adjusted the inductance here by a factor thousand and then I also adjusted uh, the resistance values and I just kind of you know picked a few different values just to see what the effect was and then zoomed in right here to generate this bottom graph and so you know really you see the effect of it says series 4 here it should say 150 ohms 347 uh, nanohenries. It's because I've been moving this uh, this waveform around a little bit. But anyways, uh, really the effect of the resistance is just to uh, essentially change the damping. And that's exactly what you would expect from an RLC oscillator. That's a nice explanation for what's going on here. You get better damping, uh, which is what you would like for you know a transient response here uh, whenever this signal level switches. Uh, however, uh, you don't get the suppression of the low frequency noise. 
going back in here, there's actually some other stuff that we should model. First things first, what we can do is we can actually look at the driver here for our logic circuit, or for our oscillator, I should say, that we're, we're simulating, um, as well as for our driver circuit, and looks at, look at what happens when they're both on or when only one of them is on. So kind of to do this, what I can do is I can basically, you know, set the delay to zero here. Um, here I can set the delay to, um, you know, I've got a 2U period, so let's just say I'm going to set it to, you know, 5 microseconds. Yeah, I've got my pulse value at 0.9, so that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and update this, and then let's run it. So we've got a lot of data coming out here. But what you can actually do with this uh, in this way, let me remove some of these waves here, is just kind of compare what happens when we have the switching element on. So this is basically our I.O. That's the blue curve. And then remember, the oscillator we delayed by 5 microseconds and then we turned it on. And so that's the green curve. So I'm going to remove these just for clarity because there's a lot of stuff going on here. But we can get down to here, we see the high frequency noise is nicely attenuated uh, going into the ferrite section. However, the low, low frequency noise remains. But now look what happens when the oscillator starts switching. We get these huge spikes, and that's really unfortunate. And this is definitely due to the fact that we have this ferrite here. So how do we test this? Well, we can do something really simple and just delete it. Let me take a moment to clean this all up. Just update our validation. Let's rerun this bad boy. It's going to regenerate some of our waves here. This is going to take a moment to, to regenerate all this, but we basically just want to look at a few specific things here. And I'll go ahead and fit this to the document. And so now you notice that we do not have that same problem that we had before. When we had the ferrite here, we saw these big spikes starting at five microseconds and continuing every two microseconds. So now we're not generating new high frequency noise in this section of the PDN because we took out that ferrite. So that's really important and it illustrates what ferrites can do even though they can block some of that high frequency noise coming from this section, from reaching over to this section, what happens? They can actually generate their own high frequency noise in this section. So that's really important insight, and it's one of the things that you should check if you do intend to use a ferrite as an isolating element between two different rails in a PDN. Okay, everybody, so I've been on phone calls and videos and speaking engagements all day. My voice is worn out, so I'm going to call it a day for now. We had Altium Live today, so if you haven't had a chance to go check out any of the great speakers at Altium Live, go check them out. You'll learn a ton. There's a lot of great information. There's probably some familiar faces you've seen either on the Altium podcast or elsewhere around YouTube. And of course, yours truly got to give a speech. I was uh, very happy to, to be invited to, to speak at Altium Live this year. So that was great. Um, all right, everybody. So if you like this video, go ahead and give us a like. We may do some other stuff with ferrites and a PDN in terms of simulations. And if you want to see more of that, hit that subscribe button. Leave your questions and comments in the comments section and definitely on this stuff don't forget to call your fabricator folks thanks everybody